Preceptor. My lord, it has begun. The power is already building. Are you ready for your task? We shall not fail you, my lord. The price of failure is Armageddon. God go with you. Really? <laughs> well, what has that been? Oh, there was a girl in Paris, but it didn't work out. <laughs> oh, way to go, mate. <laughs> I've heard about those French babes. <laughs> I think she'd be interested in a good-looking Aussie Bushman, eh? Only if it helped her career. <laughs> Weather like this, the old crate flies herself. How about weather like that? Another couple of seconds and we'll be laughing. Well, you better strap yourself in, George. Meanwhile, as Paris wakes to yet another clear hot day, in the south, the bizarre weather continues. Marseille. 20 days of rain, Bordeaux, 30, and across the world, from Beijing to New York, there are reports of earth tremors, floods, typhoons. Who is it? Vernon Blier? It's Nico Collard. You're early. You said it was uh, urgent? We don't have much time. The power sources are building to a peak. It's all in the manuscript. Look, I decoded it. No one's ever done that. They paid me serious money. But the Earth? We're all in danger. Now they want to kill me because I know too much. Somehow, we'd landed in the jungle, and I was alive. Then, I smelled smoke. I was gonna have to get out, and fast. I unfastened the seatbelt carefully. Whoa, Harry! What's going on? Harry? Man, that was close. We weren't safe at all. We were balanced on the edge of a cliff. And now I was trapped in the rear half of the plane. We were balanced on top of the cliff. In a situation like this, smoke was a bad thing. There was no way of opening the window. The impact from the landing had twisted the door frame. Damn! You never know when a beer is going to come in handy. The buckle was quick release. I soon had the crate freed up.
Harry! Harry, wake up! <laughs> Slapping him wasn't gonna work. Searching Harry turned up a handy bottle opener. Cheers, mate. Oh, came to a while back. <laughs> Thought I'd grab 40 winks. Oh, don't get much chance in my line. Uh, oh. What were you doing flying us into that storm? You nearly got us killed! Oh, calm down, will ya? The storm came from nowhere. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Weird. So how far is it to the landing strip? Well, not far. We were right on top of it when the storm hit. glass was cracked. Harry's fire extinguisher was in worse shape than Harry. Here goes! Yes! Whoa! Maybe not. I was going to need more weight at the back of the plane. But what? Are you trying to kill us? You okay, Harry? Sure, mate. The plane's completely trashed. Ah, no big deal. Well, how can you be so calm about it? I won it in a card game. Terrific. Got a free tank of fuel, too. Which was lucky. Why? Well, we wouldn't have got here without it. I borrowed your bottle opener. No sweat. Do you drink this stuff all the time? Ah, tastes like angel sweat. Harry, we need more ballast at the back of the plane. Well, okay, George, if you think it'll help. Harry, just don't move! You bet! No, not yet! Harry, stay there! Whoa! Whoa! That was close. Well, I don't know. Could have been worse. Yeah? I might still have been in it. Trying to cheer me up, Harry? Ha! Ah, you know, you're not bad for a yank. That makes me feel a whole lot better. We make a great team. Hmm. Oh, I could help you out. Here, with your work. Be your driver. Sort out the locals. Harry, like I told you, I'm only here to meet someone, then I'm out of here. Oh, yeah? Maybe I know the fella. I doubt it. Guy called Chalmundali. Never heard of him. Exactly. What's he do? He's a scientist. Well, what kind of a scientist? He lives in the jungle, says he's built a machine that can create limitless energy. I'm a patent lawyer. He wants me to write the patent. Make us all rich, okay? Capiche? Oh, I see. A mad scientist. Ugh. <sighs> I don't want to be rude, George, but did you seriously believe all that crap? Of course not. But have you ever lived in Idaho? Fair enough. Now what are we going to do? Well, you lead the way. Quit messing around, mate. Guess next time I'll avoid the scenic route. Yeah, well, when you've had your bit of fun, I'll see you at the top.
last time. Where is he? I don't know! I don't know! For God's sake, I've told you everything I know! For which I am deeply grateful. Nevertheless, it was always my intention to kill you. Goodbye, Mr. Cholmondley. How many times? It's not Cholmondley, it's... It was a Sunday morning. I was three months behind on the rent. And my editor had given me another bum assignment. An interview with some hacker about the end of the world. Where had it all gone wrong? Was I never going to get that lucky break? What had happened to my glittering career in journalism? And then, everything changed. The door was securely locked. I needed to find another way if I was going to get into that apartment. It was quiet, but that didn't mean the place was empty. I needed to get into the apartment to find out what was going on. The door was locked. I could hear the TV. Perhaps someone was in. No answer. Either they couldn't hear, or they didn't want to hear. There were no messages on the pad. A pencil hung beside it on a piece of string. Somehow I was going to have to climb past the railing to reach the apartment windows. Through the grime I could see a shape, a shape that looked a lot like a body. It was the hacker's window, all right. The window was securely locked. I knew that climbing balconies was crazy, but the story had me hooked and I wasn't about to let it go. It was pretty dark, but I could just make out the shape of a bed. The window was ajar, but with the latch down, it was still locked. The gap was too thin, even for my fingers. It's true, a press card can get you in anywhere. Just one little wiggle between the window and the lock, and the latch lifted. Here goes. Whoever did the dusting here never got round to the TV. The wardrobe was stuffed with unwashed clothes. Disgusting. Cold Singapore noodle with tea bag. Gross. An old monitor had been stuffed in the corner. The guy was dead all right.
the door was securely locked. Something shiny caught my eye. It was a shell casing from the gun the killer used. I held on to it. I needed any clue I could find. Who needs ornaments when you've got a TV? He must have been dead before he hit the ground, which ruled out CPR, thank God. I didn't fancy going mouth to mouth with that acne and those teeth. I knew I had to search the body. It was still warm. All I could find was his business card. Vernon Blier, software consultant. This was the crazy geek I'd been due to meet, all right. Maybe he wasn't so crazy after all. The computer had been wrecked. Someone had removed the hard drive in a hurry. This was one serious binder collection. Okay, whatever you say. I've been waiting a long time for the chance to do this. So, we've met before? Oh, yes. Really? You obviously didn't make an impression the first time. You won't be so clever when I've killed you. Time's up! <laughs> going to stop us this time. I never forget her face. So why had I forgotten hers? Ow! Oof! Damn! Come back, you salop! Where did she disappear to? I was lucky the pan had deflected one of those bullets. Someone had thrown away a bank statement. Perhaps I should make a call. I wondered if Andre might have any ideas. Andre Lobino? Hi, Andre. My dear Nico, how are you? Having one of my interesting days? I was about to interview a guy when somebody shot him. My God! Are you hurt? I'm okay, but the killer escaped before I could stop her. Her? A woman? That's right. And it's not the only strange thing. I think this is more than just your ordinary homicide. Oh dear. Are you off on one of your little adventures again, Nico? Hey, what do you mean? I suppose at least that idiot Stobar isn't involved this time. Andre. I was nearly killed. Okay, okay. Trouble is, I can't find any leads to follow up. The killer must have left a trail of some kind. Search the whole area for clues. I'll see what I can turn up. Andre, I'm going to get back to the investigation. Okay, Nico. Oh, and what I said earlier, I'm sorry. Don't worry, Andre. I ask for it sometimes. But you know, George, he was a lot of things. But he was never an idiot. If you need my help, be sure to call me. Perhaps I should make a call. Better check in with my paper.
News desk? Candice, is the old man in? Yes, but he's in a meeting. Tell him that you'll need to get someone to cover for me this afternoon. Oh, so techno nerd turned out to be a bit of a dish, did he? Not exactly. Let's just say the morning was full of surprises. I'm intrigued. Anything you want to file? Still on the case. But you'll be the first to know. By the way, have you got anything on this programmer? Just that he's one of the best in his field. Thanks. Bye now. The number of the phone was 012374-8019. There was a light flashing. A message had been left on the answer machine. Maybe there was a clue on the answer machine. You have three new messages. Vernon, darling, it's Mamo here. I'm at my wit's end. I've given your trousers three washes at 100 degrees and that stain still won't come out. It's more like cement than mayonnaise. Anyway, the ironing's done. Oh, I hate these machines. Au revoir, à dimanche. This is Nico Coladia from La Liberté. Just to say I'll be round at 8, as promised. Goodbye. Vernon, it's Beatrice. Good luck with the reporter. I'll be waiting for you in the gardens afterwards. Love you, Snooky. Snooky? When in doubt, search the trash. But there was nothing of interest. There had to be a clue around here somewhere. But not in there. It was just an old sheet of newspaper. But you never know what might come in handy. The gate was locked. <laughs> what have we here? It was a wig, an expensive one too, but more important, it was an exact copy of my own style. The label inside had been cut out. The killer had covered her tracks. Almost. There were a few strands of blonde hair inside. So the woman I'm after really has blonde hair, not black. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. I tell you, I've had enough of this job. 
Day in, day out, the same old drudgery, huh? Why don't you give it up, then? Give it up? Huh? Who do you think you are telling me to give up my job? I thought... Thought you were too good for the likes of me, I expect? No, not at all. I didn't mean... I was a dancer once, you know. At Le Moulin Rouge. So stick that on your velo and ride it. That's wonderful. Of course. Alphonse, <laughs> he wouldn't have any of it. I'll not have you fleshing your knickers out of a Paris, he said. Get a proper job. So I did. A real liberated man. He was an angel. I won't hear a word against him. This wig belongs to someone I'm looking for. Nice. Mm. At Le Moulin Rouge, we always had such beautiful wigs. Have you seen anyone wearing this wig? No. Was she a dancer? Something much worse. Pah! A singer, then. Do you know a young man called Vernon? I'm sure I don't know what you're suggesting. I am a married woman. Of course, between you and me, in my dancing days, it was a different matter. Have you seen a young blonde woman by any chance? I certainly have. Skinny looking thing, like you. Thanks. Which way did she go? She got into a sports car and drove off. Do you happen to know the make of car? What do you take me for? Some kind of mechanic? You'll have to ask someone else. It happens to all of us. No one escapes. What do you mean? Look at the picture. Your looks have gone already. Just what a girl likes to hear. Just one thing. Your husband, Alphonse, is he around? No. I thought perhaps he might have seen something. It's unlikely. Why? He left me 20 years ago. Ran away. With a singer? That's amazing. How did you know? Lucky guess. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Au revoir. I couldn't open the door. It was locked. Hi. Well, hi there, beautiful. You are looking for something? I might be. <laughs> you have come to the right place. Right place, right guy, huh? That's how it looks to me too. Were you around a little earlier? Well, I've been around a while. Oh, that's good. I'm a reporter and I need to ask you a few questions. Have you seen a blonde woman running by? I haven't seen any women running around. Most babes tend to stop when they see how I can handle a board. Uh, you should get yourself a new photographer, honey. Oh, do you think so? Drop by my studio sometime. Take a look at this wig. Yeah, nice, but not really my style. The woman who wore this has just killed someone. I don't blame her. I'd want to kill someone if I had to wear that wig. Do you happen to know a guy called Vernon? The coder? Yes. Yeah, he's cool. Hangs out in the park with his girlfriend. Where's the park? Just down there, where Twitcher hangs about. About Vernon? Yeah? I'm afraid he's been killed. Shot. Oh man, that's too bad. Still, a neighborhood like this, only the brave survive. Huh? Have you seen a shell casing before? Sure. It's from a real gun. Big deal. It was a big deal. For somebody. Don't suppose you saw a sports car in the area earlier? The red E-type Jag, you mean? Yes. Why did you notice it? I used to run one a little like it. Did you happen to get the registration number? Hey, there's only one set of numbers I like. And I'm not talking shoe size, huh? Thanks. Anyway. I hope you catch the killer. I will. So where's your posse? What? Big guy like you? Gotta have a posse, surely. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, I got two. Wow. 
Uh, how about you? You you got a posse? Oh yeah, but I like to keep it secret. <laughs> got ya. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour. Are you Beatrice? How do you know my name? I'm Nicole Collard. Vernon is going to meet you. That's right. He was supposed to come here afterwards. Where is he? I'm sorry. Vernon is... He won't be coming. What's happened? Did you see a blonde woman a short time ago? I don't know. Tell me about Vernon. Did you happen to see a sports car in the area? Don't talk to me about cars! What about Vernon? Something's wrong, isn't it? Talking to a goth about death felt like being in a vampire movie. Beatrice, I'm afraid I have some bad news. It's Vernon, isn't it? He's dead. What? I'm sorry. Bonjour. Yes. I wonder if you can help me. I doubt it. And anyway, I'm on duty. It's pretty quiet this morning. It's Sunday. What do you expect? Did you see a blonde woman run past a little earlier? Maybe. Maybe not. I need to find her. It's important. I'm sure it is. She killed a man in the apartments over there. How very dramatic. It was for the guy she killed. Do you happen to know a young computer programmer called Vernon? Is he the one who got himself killed? It wasn't exactly a lifestyle choice, you know. I find sarcasm to be a particularly low form of wit, madame. What does this prove? Any fool can throw together a fake ID. True, but only a real fool would impersonate a journalist at my paper. Take a look at this wig. Very interesting. As wigs go. I found it. Well, aren't you the clever one? It belonged to the killer. The woman who wore this has just killed someone. Fascinating. The man who just parked here is going to get a ticket. Please, madame. I'm being serious. There was an E-type Jag in the area a little earlier. What of it? Could you tell me something about it? I doubt it. And if I could, I wouldn't. You could be anybody. Take a look at this. Interesting. 12 millimeter, and recently fired. That's right. But how do you know about firearms? Let us just say, I have not always been a traffic warden. What else can you tell me about it? From the head stamp, manufactured in Prague. And the gun itself? The new Magnum, if I'm not wrong. You can tell all that from the shell? You just have to know what to look for. It came from the gun of the woman who tried to kill me. This is not a Saturday night special. You are dealing, I think, with professional killers. Can you help me? Fire away! Ha! My little joke. Did you see a blonde woman running by here earlier? Yes. 
around your size, good build, muscle tone, shoe size three, maybe four, and I think not French. That's amazing. No, not amazing. Just good training. Training? I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to tell you anything more. About this wig. It belonged to the killer. So, you really are connected with the shooting. That's right. And I need all the help I can get. Did you see the E-type Jag that was in the area earlier? Yes, I did. I believe it belonged to the killer. And they say crime doesn't pay. What can you tell me about it? It was parked illegally. I gave it a ticket. Great! Do you have the registration number? Uh, here it is. 451 CAC 75. Merci. Can you tell me anything else about the car? Hmm. You know? There was some kind of mask on the passenger seat. Mask? You mean, like, a child's mask? No. An old mask. The kind they wear in a the theater? Merci, madame. You've been a great help. It is but a courtesy from one professional to another. Of course. Sounds like the police are on their way. I would appreciate it if you kept our little conversation to yourself. You understand. Of course. I wouldn't want to blow your cover. Exactly. By the way, just who do you work for? Can I trust you? Of course. One day soon, the aliens will land. We are preparing to fight them. You may join us if you wish. That's uh, very kind of you. But I have to go now. Au revoir. has been a murder. We are questioning everyone in the area. What is your name? Nicole Collard. It's her, all right. Please come with us. And this is... Come on, speak up! Nicole Collard. Aha! The woman he had arranged to meet. She's a tough one, I think, sir. Like me to loosen her tongue a little? Not quite yet. Your identity card, please. My press card. A journalist. Typical. You have a problem with journalists? Only the spineless, lying, interfering variety. Looks like I'm in trouble then. She's the murderer, monsieur! Lock her up before she kills us all! Control yourself, madame. I'm conducting an investigation here. And we're getting on so well. How did you know the dead man? He contacted me through my paper. He wanted to meet. Why? Some nonsense about the end of the world. Why did you kill him? I didn't. But you admit you were here. He was already dead when I arrived. I broke in through the bedroom window. The killer was still here. And? We fought through there, in the kitchen. Then she ran off down the fire escape and I lost her. Hmm. There are certainly signs of a struggle. Inspector. We. Oui? How did you know Vernon was due to meet me? Your message on the answer phone. Here's the wig the killer wore. I'll take that as evidence. Where did you find it? Over the wall at the back of the apartment. Oh, I see. How oh, terrible. You've been framed. Correct, Inspector. She's the killer! I saw her with my own eyes! The woman I fought was really a blonde. The neighbor said she had dark hair. I've already given you the wig. For what it's worth. Have you any idea why he was killed? None at all. Perhaps it was to stop him talking to me. Not everybody rates journalists so highly, mademoiselle. I've got the number of the killer's car. My, you are being helpful. Are you quite sure you're a journalist? Do you want the number or not? Very well. 451 CAC 75. Thanks. Am I free to go? Don't let her get away! The evidence is clear enough. I'm placing you under arrest, Mademoiselle Collard. Officer, take her away. With pleasure, sir. 